Welcome to Thoughtfully Mindless. I decided to make a fun little video about creating AI art. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I've come across creating AI art without any creativity. I do like to create art where I'm prompting specifically for something, but every once in a while I get in the mood to create, but I, I don't have anything in mind. I just want to see what I can create and see where I can go with it. And uh, yeah, I, when I do this, I, I let AI help me. Um, I've also heard people say that they want to create AI art and they can't because they just can't come up with any ideas and don't know how to create anything beautiful. And I think any, anybody can do this. So I'm going to be using three things for this video. One is Pixio, uh, my friend Ross Cohen. He is the owner of that. I interviewed him a while back. Uh, I met him uh, after he created the company and everything. I uh, started using the product and really liked it. It has its limitations, but it also has some some strong points too. So it depends what you're doing, but there's a lot you can do on this. There's uh, there's song generation, image generation, video generation, and much more. There's uh, a feature called Morphcraft where you can take your images and morph them into something cool using some prompts. And I really enjoy that feature. It's actually one of my favorite. If you're interested in Pixio, I will have a link at the bottom, my affiliate link at the bottom that you can use. Uh, using that link would help the podcast, help the channel, but no obligation. If you want to do it, do it. If not, no big deal. So uh, with Pixio, what I'm able to do is I have a membership and I can just generate without using any credits or anything like that. That's one of the really nice things about Pixio. I use Midjourney as well. With Midjourney, there's a certain amount of credits that you have each month or render time, and then ChatGPT. So uh, with this, there's a couple different things that you do. One, you can use other people's work as inspiration and upload that into ChatGPT. But for this, to avoid any copyright issues or anything, I just wanted to use AI art that I'm generating. So what I've done here in Pixio is I used really simple prompts, uh, like something epic, something beautiful. anything something awesome like really simple prompts so this requires no creativity hopefully hopefully you can just think of awesome epic anything uh they should be pretty simple so anyway what you're going to do is you're going to generate some images or you know steal some art from somebody as inspiration you're going to find something that you really like so i just want to look through this i i prompted these prior to the video starting just because I didn't want to have a video of me just waiting for these to process even though it's pretty quick. I like that. That could be cool. So let me let me download a few of these. Download this one. I wish this was live so I can get feedback and see what you guys wanted me to do. I'll start doing more live stuff over time too. This isn't my usual style, but that could be interesting to see what comes of that. So we'll do a few different things here. Let me know in the comments what you like to create art of and if there are any specific videos that you would like me to consider making. Any type of art. Like I can go into anything. I don't know all the vocabulary for all different art styles or anything like that. But the way that I do this is actually just leveraging AI. I think this is kind of cool. Let me know what of these I didn't spend any time on that you really think? Like, what did I miss here? What did you like that I should have clicked on and created something for? Used as inspiration. 
The last one I'm going to use is this one. I really like that. All right. I got six images in there. That's it for Pixio. Uh, just to show you a little bit about this, though, actually. So this is PixCraft. This is using mid-journey-like models. There's Stable Diffusion 3.5. Uh, there's Recraft. Recraft TV three and this is new. I don't I don't even know about this one. Dolly three, so just like uh, Dolly three is ChatGPT. Uh, Fluxcraft, which I can't remember what they do. And then there's some other ones. There's quite a few options. So I'm just using a Mid Journey model. But this is what we're going to do next. I am going to add the image. I'm going to do this one first. That's the image I like the most. And here is the prompt for this. Um, analyze this image. I'll go over this here in just a second. I just can't type and talk at the same time. You don't have to word this exactly like I have, but this is generally what I'll say in these situations. Analyze this image, create a prompt for it to recreate it, share the prompt, then create the image and share it. Then analyze the result, compare it, compare it to the starting image and create and share a re refined prompt along with the new image. I do this so that uh, I specify this, like that you're sharing the prompt, because I've found sometimes when you don't explicitly say that, it'll create the image, like it'll just think you want it to create an image. What we're doing is a little bit beyond that. What we want is for it to create a prompt, share the prompt with us, then create the image, then analyze, and then rework the prompt to get closer to the original. And I didn't even specify that. If you want to get more detailed with the prompt, you can. You can say that we're trying to get as close to the original as possible. I'm just using this as cre uh, inspiration. So in my mind, I don't mind that it's going to not be exact potentially. I'm, I'm giving it a little bit of uh, leeway here. I like things in 16:9 ratio. That's widescreen. It gives me a little bit more uh, capability to do other things. So, uh, you don't need Midjourney for this. I I think Midjourney tends to make better images, but it also depends on the style and and different things like that. So as you can see here, it is creating a prompt for this. So what I like to do is while I'm waiting for that prompt to generate, I will come over here. I already have in mid journey, I have it on 16, nine ratio. Uh, I have it on the standard model. I have my stylization, stylization set to 100 weirdness to zero and variety to zero. Um, maybe I'll make another video about going over what some of this stuff is. But stylization is basically how much of mid-journey style are you going to allow to enter the prompt, uh, to enter the image creation. Weirdness is kind of what it sounds like. It's just unexpected results. And then variety is like how close do you want it to be consistent with one another. So if you turn that variety up a lot, you'll get very different images for the same prompt. For this, keeping it pretty basic. The only thing above zero is stylization. As at 100, I tend to like things at 100 
or 200 for that. So we have that first prompt. And now we have an image. I typically save all of these. I'm going to take this next prompt. Go to Midjourney as well. The one of the reasons I like to go to Midjourney and do this is because that prompt is then saved for me. I can go into my organization tab and I can filter this, find anything I want. Midjourney is really nice for organization. It's one of the reasons I definitely keep it. So let's look at the original. The original is this image reworked. Looks like that. Definitely different, but it has a lot of the cool characteristics that I really like. And there's another one. I like that one too. All right. So we have that. Now we have these created in Midjourney as well. So this is what Midjourney came up with. Midjourney gives you four generations for each one. They're all really cool. Similar. I like that. I love nebulas and astronomy, like just beautiful astronomical art. I've always loved that. So yeah, that is one thing. Now I am going to come up here, copy this prompt, and we're going to do another one. Yeah, we're, we're going to do another one. And actually, no, we're not. We're going to do this. All right, so now I say change the image by roughly 50% in whatever creative way. I meant to say creative way you'd like. No limits, share prompt and image. We'll see what that creates. In the meantime, I am going to prepare the next one. So, cool. A surreal and imaginative composition. We'll throw that into mid-journey as well. I love to throw into both to see what we get. Sometimes I really like what Dolly creates in OpenAI, and sometimes I really like what what Midjourney creates. It, it really just depends. Midjourney tends to be better at making really realistic images, but when it when it's a little bit more abstract and not necessarily realistic, it can do a really good job in Dolly. Sometimes Dolly's generations are just cooler, in my opinion. All right, so we have this one. I like that probably more than the other two. We have one of the prompts right here. I probably won't do all six of these images, but I'll do a few of them. All right, that's one image for us. I'm gonna look at the original image is right here. So it's a face with butterflies and flowers on it. Pretty cool. A new image. Also very cool, a little bit different. Um, I mean, I like the original a little bit more than this one. Not that this doesn't have some good qualities, but I just like the original more. I kind of like this one a little bit more than the first generation. I just feel like it's more what I would like. I'm gonna throw this prompt in here. And when I'm doing this, I'll often like not even be paying attention to Midjourney. If I'm going really fast with this, I'll just be throwing images or throwing prompts in there and just I'll go back later and look. So uh, I'll when I'm really in the zone, really in a groove with this stuff. I can just start generating really fast. I'm gonna do this image. 
there's more that you can do with this too. This is, uh, why aren't you accepting that? Try that again. There we go. There's more that you could do with this. You can upload more than one image at the same time and you can ask it to blend these and create a prompt for them. Maybe that's what we'll do next. Uh, I'll take two images that I downloaded originally and have it create a blend of that, take properties from two. And I'm gonna leave it up to the AI to choose what it takes from one and leads from another. We can do two images, we could do three images. It really doesn't matter. We can do whatever we want. This is AI, this is the world of AI. So many possibilities. All right, I don't, okay, cool. We're getting another one. One thing I've noticed with AI or with ChatGPT specifically, I'll have threads where I have a ton of image generations. And I realize over time, it actually slows down quite a bit. So if you're using the same chat just over and over and over, you end up with a lot of lag. Like it just, it takes a while to process. And you can also, you can do more in one prompt. So with this one prompt, I have it creating two images and two prompts, but you can have it do three or four or five. With ChatGPT, you do have a limit on how many you can do in a certain amount of time. So that's something to pay attention to. All right, now let's, that's not what I want. I want to use this. for them to recreate them blended. All right, so we're gonna have two images for this one. Let's do that uh, the little dragon one and then Maybe this one too. We really can do three if we want. Let's just do three. Why not? All right, now we have that prompt going. And another thing that you can do is as you're creating these, you can start using more generate, or you can start using the images that you create as more sources. Uh, you can start changing the different aspects of this and you can insert your creativity if you're in a creative mood or as you draw some inspiration maybe you want to add some elements to it maybe you want the scene to be a little different maybe you want to add a character whatever it might be you can add so you can use this as a base and start adding your own concept into it um i'm in the wrong spot i already downloaded those things all right Let's see what we got here. Refined prompt. I don't know if this gave me, oh, it's giving me two images for each prompt. That's interesting. Usually I don't get that with ChatGPT, but sometimes you end up, <laughs> this is not at all what I was expecting, but fine. It'll be interesting to see what uh, Midjourney comes up with for this. It seems like something that Midjourney might do a better job with, but we'll see. I mean, it, there's just, it's really busy. I don't mind busy, but. It's not, in my eyes, it's not the most pleasing thing in the world. I actually like this a lot better. Now let's, uh, let's change this.
All right, so I said, now take the last image and change it by 100% so you're inspired but making something completely unique and new. You rock. You're better than Da Vinci. Make sure to share the prompt and image. I like to tell it to share the prompt and image because sometimes it starts forgetting. And then we do all these. Let's go and look at what we've created here. Uh, ChatGPT can be a little frustrating at times because it can... Oh, it's still analyzing and give me a new one, is it? No. It's just analyzing. Which is fine. I don't, I don't need it to give me a, a new thing every time. But for a second, let's take a quick break and see what we've generated with this. So we already went through these. This is the uh, the prompt where we changed it by 50%. So there, there's some cool features in this. I really like this one. Uh, on Midjourney, I'll like I'll heart the ones that I really like that I might want to upscale later. Uh, upscaling in Midjourney is really nice. You actually get more detail in it. It's not just a larger image. It's a more detailed image. So your upscales do matter. Uh, they do they do use more render time than the, the smaller images. So something to be aware of. This one's pretty cool. I like the bold colors on these more than I liked the chat gpt ones i just think they're like the deep the deep blue like this one's cool too but like these colors this deep blue i love that so this is like a way that you can be someone who just enjoys looking at art but then you can kind of guide it or just let it kind of run free and you know whatever you're choosing as your starting image is going to matter so Here we go, more of these. I like this one. This is that little landscape one. These are interesting. It's quite a bit different than the original image. They were like balloons or something like that, but I really like this. I would even use this as a starting image, like throw that into ChatGPT and do more. But this is my first uh, video like this, so I'm not sure exactly what you guys want to see. Um, I'm, my brain is all over the place. I, I jump from one thing to another. So these are those original ones with the dragon. I do like these better than dollies with opening eyes. I, I just like them. Like I like this one. I always like these bioluminescent kind of vibes and stuff. I always love moons and stars, nebulas. Always captures my attention. Sounds cool. It's like a phoenix. That's cool. Awesome. Yeah, so let's go back here. We have this. Now, we did prompts for the time being, and this is a prompt, but once you are in a flow, you can just iterate and iterate and iterate. I'll maybe in a second, I'll show you some that I've done before. Hopefully they, they pull up because they've been in the chat history for a little bit, but images that I've generated just by, by doing this and running it over and over, iterate again, iterate again. And sometimes I'm saying iterate again for something that generated three or four images. So each time I write iterate again, it's going to create another three or four images. It's pretty cool. Like you can, you can create a lot doing this. This one's taking a little time, taking its sweet time. Now, big. This will be the last one that we do. I just wanted to show you some basics in this. Now, like, as I said before, if you want to, say, add mushrooms or add fire or ice or bioluminescence, like, I'm, I'm just naming some things I like to add in and things sometimes, you can do that. You can say, change it by 100% add this quality or that quality like sky is the limit here i know that's getting in more into creativity and everything but the purpose of this isn't not to be creative it's to show you that you are creative and you can just be inspired for your creativity i i do think that everyone has some creativity i think there are different uh, levels of creativity among people but 
I think everyone's capable of this. So, hmm. Interesting. So it, That's weird. It adjusted the prompt and created a new one. Every once in a while you get a little glitch like that. Not a big deal. Cool. So yeah, I'm busy. That's interesting. I said mushrooms, but I didn't type anything about mushrooms. It just kind of went in that direction. I love mushrooms. Cool. Cool. All right. So we have that processing in mid-journey now for that last image. Last prompt. And then I want to show you some stuff I've created with this if it pulls up. So tons of different scenes. I probably use some inspiration. I can't remember what I used in this. Some aren't that good. Like I think this one's kind of weird. <laughs> Not my favorite. Uh, I think I made this one in mid journey and then started uh, creating prompts for it and just seeing what it would do. And in this case, like this was one of those cases where mid journey and Dolly were creating both really cool stuff. Like I love this. I loved what, uh, mid journey was creating just cool stuff. So yeah, a little bit of what it's capable of. Let's see. I think the, this, Pretty similar. This is not one I did a bunch on. I have so many chats going. It's one thing. If anyone from OpenAI, OpenAI listens to this, you need a better way to organize your chats because some chats you want to hold on to for months or even a year or more, and you want to be able to like pull them up easily. Like a folder system would be so much better than what we have. I'm not going to go through all of these, but like I just used a starting image, asked it to, I might have trouble finding where I actually, st you can, you can see me, like I'll say four more, get crazy with it. Imagine the un unimaginable. Like I'm just like, AI is funny like that. You give it a little encouragement and it, it, it'll help sometimes. So I do that with these prompts, probably not going to be able to find the original. Yeah, so I was changing. Yeah, I would just iterate, iterate, iterate. So many cool things. But yeah, you can you can say change it by 10%. If you really like what you've created, change it by 10% and then see what what comes of it. If you like it, but you're just wanting to create different things, change it by 100%. Change it by whatever you want. The bottom line is you don't have to be creative from the start. You just have to know what you like. You just have to see an image and like that image. And like I said, from the beginning, you don't need a complex prompt to start. So you can go to an image generator. There's many that you can find for free and just create an image, anything, and just wait until you get what you like. Use that as your starter image, throw it into chat GPT, and then Go crazy with it. Last thing, let's just see what Midjourney created for that last one. This one's more of like a jellyfish thing than a mushroom, but those are mushrooms too. So anyway, that is it. Let's do this. Uh, let's download this image. And let's throw this image. onto my background. That's it. All right. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the podcast. Uh, I, I do a long form podcast. I release on, on YouTube, usually about, uh, five days late, uh, after I release on Spotify and everywhere else. I'm on X. Find me at RDTM podcast. That's A R T I E T M podcast. Uh, that's where I'm most active. You can find me on Instagram at Thoughtfully Mindless. I think I'm on TikTok now as well, Thoughtfully Mindless. Those are usually just clips of the podcast posted there. But yeah, go through the channel, 
listen to the podcast, and uh, let me know what you think of this video in the comments. I'll see you next time. Take care.